Hi, welcome to the Shireen Show, where we talk about mind, body, spirit, and relationship. So today's actually really special because we're going to get to, for the first time ever on the Shireen Show, talk about the body. Because as we've talked about before, mind and body are connected. There's so much that goes on with that. And to help us to really figure out what is going on with our human body, we have a health and wellness expert named Jack Kennevick. So thank you so much for being with us, Jack. Thank you, Shereen. It's good to see you. It is so great to have yeah. you. We have not had a health expert on, so I'm really excited to pick your brain. Yeah. And Honored to be the first one. Yes, thank yeah. you. All right, so why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. I know you were a CPA, and you kind of switched out of yeah. business to get into this. So tell us about your path to being a health yeah. expert. It's kind of a bizarre story, but yeah, I did that for 11 years. I was a CPA for all that time I come from a whole family of CPAs my dad my mother my brother my, my sister and uh, it's it's kind of cool that you help empower people to do what they were meant to do in life and <laughs> follow their passion and that's kind of what I did so I jumped ship at 35 and been doing this wellness industry for about eight years now and uh, so it's kind of cool that we cross paths I that's love it. So awesome. So, I love it. So what made you decide, okay, I've been a CPA for however long and now I'm going to go do this? What was it? Yeah, I just knew in my heart that I was not doing what I was put on the planet to do. So it's not a great feeling to leave work every day knowing that uh, I'm just I'm not fulfilling my mission yeah. on life. So I can remember even when I was 12 years old having this vision of helping people uh, when I would be older. And I just didn't know what that looked like. Right. But uh, you know Richard Simmons, right? I do. Total goofball. <laughs> he's, you know, crazy. You know, he's yeah. got the big hair and the, you know, spandex. But I always thought, even as a kid, that that guy rocks because he really helps the people that need it the most, yeah. the people that are the most lost. So I always want to kind of be like him. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So tell us a little bit about uh, how you help people get more in touch with their health and wellness or, or, or what happens when someone comes to you? Do they say, I'm really unhealthy or? Do yeah. they just want to get more fit? How does it usually go? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the, the people that I help, they, for whatever reason, I end up helping mostly middle-aged women. And I think it's because they are the most overwhelmed. They're multitasking. Okay. They're trying to juggle the job, the house, the mortgage, the kids. Right. And most people, when they come to me, they have tried everything. And they just, they gain some success. And then they fail. They go up and down. And yeah. they're, just, they're just at the end of their rope. Okay. So I, I like to try and take a real world approach to these people and just kind of uh, kind of take tiny, tiny turns to the screws in helping them slowly change their lifestyle. Okay, so is that kind of how you differ from other coaches? Like it's more of like a lifestyle change as opposed to a yeah. yo-yo? Yeah, and uh, most, most nutritionists out there, most fitness trainers, they're exceptional at what they do. They're very good. Technically, they know, they know their stuff and they right. genuinely care about their clients. But I think in the last eight years or so, I've seen a lot of experts, they, they tend to treat their clients as though they were nutritionists or as though they were trainers. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so the information that they give them is correct. If you follow this diet or you follow this this uh, fitness program, yeah, you will gain weight and gain some success, but right. it's not really based in reality of what that client is going through, having to juggle everything. Interesting. So again, you make these tiny, tiny turns to the screws and uh, okay. yeah, and that leads to long-term success. So it sounds like instead of you giving them like the cookie cutter information, this is what works, mm -hmm. you maybe get a little more into the details of their life and what works for them. Yeah, it, you re it's such a disservice and that's why uh, this whole industry is just it is replete with all these fad diets and nutrition programs mm -hmm. and if you were to follow this the the instructions in these nutrition programs yeah you would you would lose weight you okay. gain some, but it's just not really based in reality yeah and so people they fall off and then they gain success and then they fall off again right it's which, such a disservice which as far as I know just from doing a little bit of coaching myself mm -hmm. and not necessarily in health but in other things it seems like when you fall off, it's almost more discouraging. Yeah, it really is. And it's not just uh, doing a program that's good for your body, your body type and your, your daily habits and your food preferences. It's not just that. It's also doing a coaching program that's, you know, that's integrated with your hangups and your insecurities mm. and all the emotional stuff that goes with it because it's it all starts in the head. Right. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit more about that. Like how are the mind and body connected? Yeah, you you have to understand that that in the process of gaining uh, gaining some success, you are inevitably going to fall back. 
you're right. gonna you're gonna have uh, you know life will end up throwing you a curveball. Uh, we lose a loved one, or we're stressed out at work. Money's tight, yeah. and when you're going through that, those are the times when you need somebody to hold your hand and say, "Look, it's okay. Yeah. You're gonna fall back. It's it's all good." But as long as you keep moving forward, just right. small steps. Totally makes sense. I mm -hmm. actually am doing a new like like non-gluten, no sugar, no sure. dairy, like sort of an anti-inflammatory diet. Right. Because I've seen a nutritionist, and she told me that I tend to have inflammation and I should stay yeah. away from inflammatory foods. Yeah. So I've been trying to do that and I just could not help but get a latte on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to do it. So it's nice to hear that even though I fall off the wagon sometimes. Well, that's okay good. because if you, I mean, it's great to be on a gluten-free diet and lower your sugar. It helps inflammation. But if you right. honestly can't see yourself sticking to that, yeah. I mean, have a latte. It's right. real life, right? Yeah. And then you're going to go on vacation or you're going to go to a party yeah. or the holidays are coming up and you can relax and enjoy yourself and enjoy life. Right. And you'll continue moving forward, not just now, but for the next 10, 20 years. That's right. the key there. Yeah, and I guess my plan with this whole thing is so that it, it sort of becomes like a new normal, like maybe pulling back and having no gluten is a little bit dramatic. Sure. But maybe after changing and having less gluten, maybe it's more normal to me to not have bread so I won't feel like I'm sacrificing when I choose a salad right. over a sandwich. And then maybe right. in 10 years, it'll feel kind of normal. <laughs> less than that. Home, at least. Yeah, less than that. And the cool <laughs> thing is it'll get easier and easier. Yeah. As you get, uh, your, your habits get better, your body will adapt and you're yeah. like oh you don't even want bread or yeah you know, yeah yeah that's the best it's easier and I know like you know obviously you do television you do guest spots just like this and mm. and there's a lot of reality TV around yeah. weight loss and all that kind of stuff so I'm wondering what's your take on all of that yeah the the shows like the I won't name the names but they're actually <laughs> they're actually pretty cool actually to, to watch because you can see what the human body is capable of achieving, right. losing 150 pounds in four right. months or, or less, and that's it's in, it's incredible. Amazing, yeah. But it's not based in reality, mm. and if you are, let's say, a 50-year-old uh, woman who is 150 pounds overweight, and you love this show, and you watch the the lead contestant, and she's she won't, you know she lost 140 pounds, and she's your idol, right? It's not, it's not real because they're taken out of their environment. They have mm -hmm. coaches, uh, they have uh, trainers working out eight hours a day. They have a private chef to cook all their meals. Yeah. And when you're not in this isolated environment away from all of, all of the stuff you have to deal with, right. it's just not real. Yeah. They actually did, a, they did a, an episode where they followed the, the lady, the winner of the show. Okay. They followed her for a couple months after the show was over and she went right back to her old habits and oh, gained no. it all back. Yeah, she'd go into McDonald's and fast food and not working out. Oh, because you're not learning the mental skills to deal with right. all the ups life. and downs in life with life yeah, yeah it is always it is always going to be difficult yeah. and so you have to know how to just take those tiny steps so which I imagine makes go. it so great that that's the way you do it, is mm -hmm. that you're really engaging in what do you do, what are your ups, what are your downs, what is your schedule, and let's yeah. just make little changes. You really got to dig deep, yeah. Right. What's, their, what's their daily schedule? What, what are they dealing with in their personal life? Right. Because that's, that's the stuff. It all, um, it all starts with that. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to call you so you can get into my personal life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Help me out with my How big of a task would that be? <laughs> <laughs> pretty tough. Uh, let me tell you. Uh, it's so amazing. So, you know, I've been kind of researching all these different diets now that I'm trying to do this anti-inflammatory thing, and it sounds like paleo is actually kind of similar, not necessarily non-gluten and all that, but, yeah. but sort of a similar diet. So what's your opinion about paleo? Yeah, paleo is one of the latest crazes, and uh, paleo, most people don't know what that even means. Right. Paleo is short for paleolithic, meaning the paleolithic era. Okay. And it's just a period of time dating from about two and a half million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. Uh -huh. And the theory is is that the human body is about 200,000 years old. So we carry caveman genetics. Uh -huh. And what did caveman survive on? Animal protein and whatever kind of came out of the ground, okay. fruits, vegetables, nuts. So we were never designed to process and use the heavy starches and the flours, the pastas, mm -hmm. the breads. That's not what the body was designed for. Mm -hmm. So we're eliminating all those starchy carbs and yeah. we're going back to, it's pretty much low carb. Right. Now that's great because if you were to follow the paleo diet, you would definitely lose weight. Right. The downside to that is that you are going to also be missing out a lot of uh, essential vitamins and nutrients and fiber. Mm. And number two, the biggest thing is 
can you honestly imagine sticking to that for the rest of your life? <laughs> right. I mean, I use the scenario, if you can picture you're sitting around a dinner table with 10 of your best friends on a Saturday night, and they're passing out the bread, and they've got pasta with dinner, can you imagine telling your friends, I'm sorry, I'm on the paleo diet, I'm not yeah. gonna have this. They're gonna look at you like, yeah, okay, like, you know, whatever, Shireen, that's, that's, that's cool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so. So, like, let's say, like, someone for me or someone who is doing paleo, mm -hmm. and it's not realistic, really, to be in your normal yeah. life and doing that. What is, what is, what works then? Like, what should people okay. do instead? All right, so I'll give you an example. Okay. Uh, I have one lady, she is 62, and she read an article in a magazine about how making these tiny changes really adds up to a big difference in your life. Okay. So she go, she has a cup of coffee every morning and she has uh, about a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. So she goes from a tablespoon to a teaspoon. Okay. So it's like 80 calories versus 30. I like it's that. nothing, right? Yeah. 50 calories a day, but 50 calories a day adds up to 1500 calories in a month or in a month. Wow. 18,000 calories in a year. And that's like 10 pounds of fat or wow. about five pounds of fat, but she lost 10 pounds doing nothing else. So she wasn't exercising anymore. She wow. wasn't uh, watching her diet anymore. People don't understand the math and how quickly the numbers add up. Mm. So if you just cut 150 calories a day, which is totally easy to do. Yeah. If you just did that, that's 55,000 calories in a year. Mm. So in this case with the paleo diet, instead of going on the paleo diet okay. and you're at this dinner table with all your friends, <laughs> right. You can have a half of a biscuit, or you can have mm -hmm. um, your pasta this, leave it the size of your fist okay. instead of having a big plate. Right. That is huge. It's a big, big deal. Just doing that. I love that because then you don't feel like you can't have it. Yeah, you're not going to get depressed. You're not going to be all uh, <laughs> aggravated, like I can't, li you know, and be embarrassed, making everybody else feel uncomfortable. Uh, right. You can live your life. Exactly. But the the adjustments to your behavior are so tiny that you barely notice it. That's awesome. And then as you get further into it, it becomes easier because your body doesn't want the junk food. You literally will lose the cravings for it. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gosh, that's so amazing. So you said she lost weight just doing that. She lost 10 pounds, and she's 62, so she's postmenopausal, which is a completely amazing. different ball game. Yeah. Really hard to lose that. Really impressive, actually, that, mm -hmm. that, that first of all, that you helped her do that, um, and second of all, that it's postmenopausal, because I always think of after that phase in life, it seems nearly impossible to lose weight. It becomes weight. really difficult. So that's why we're so impressed about her results. Right. And the thing is, the big thing is that she wasn't working out a lot. She right. wasn't cutting back anywhere else. It was just this one little thing. And it demonstrates how quickly the, the numbers add up. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know what else is nice about that is it almost makes it seem like your body's like on your side. Like it's rooting for you. <laughs> hey, your body does not want to be 50 pounds overweight. Right. But what happens is we'll, we'll get into this routine where we want to lose the weight really quickly and then something happens or we just we get frustrated and we can't stick to it anymore. Right. And your body wants to go back to what's, um, what's familiar. Got it. I, I, I was used to being 50 pounds overweight. I want to get back to this. Okay. So you give it any excuse to, to gain the weight back, it will. Right. So you got to lose the weight, but then you got to keep it off for like three to six months okay. before that's your new norm. And that's the hard part for everybody. Right getting it off, but then keeping it off. Right, yeah, because about three or four years ago, I read a book that really changed the way I looked at food, mm -hmm. and I got really serious about eating non-processed food and yeah. doing yoga, and I was like, I need to change my life. <laughs> and so I actually went vegetarian, wow. and then I started gaining a ton of weight, and I was like, I don't wanna be <laughs> like an overweight vegetarian, that wow. was not the point. So I went to this nutritionist, mm -hmm. and she did speak to me probably how she would have spoken to another nutritionist instead of like my life. Okay. Um, and she did She did help me think about food differently and start doing yoga and sort of like mellow out and get right. a little zen in my life. Yeah. Um, and I got down to 23% body fat, which wow. was my optimal, like I was That's supposed great. to, she told me I was supposed to be That's between perfect. 21 and 23 for my height, you That's know? That's right. Um, and I looked great, I mm -hmm. felt great. Uh, and I probably stayed that way for like a year. Okay. And it's been like four years since then and I cannot take the weight back off. Like it's just been forever and I'm like, oh, what do I do? Wow. Okay. Yeah. What did she say? Cut out the sugar and, and all of yeah, that. Yeah. She said cut out the sugar, mm -hmm. cut out the bread. Yeah. Um, no dairy. Well, she, she tells me no dairy, no egg yolks, no beef because egg yolks and beef have the same inflammatory thing. So it's kind of that yeah. thing you're talking about of, well, now I feel like 
there's no fun in the food, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the one one thing that's really difficult, carbohydrates and fat, they're just, they're everywhere in convenience foods. Yeah. The biggest obstacle that most people face is having the time to stop and eat something for two minutes. Right. Because we, we get up in the morning and the first thing we're flying out the door, going 100 miles an hour, and then right. before you know it, it's 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we haven't eaten anything, we're starving. Yeah. So it's really hard to eat enough protein, particularly women, we need to have you need to have enough protein in your diet to keep your metabolism stoked and okay. keep it high but that's hard to do because yeah. it's it's not realistic for me to tell you that you need to have chicken breasts and in Tupperware I mean, are you really, <laughs> really going to do that because I, I, I certainly try. don't do that uh, there's no way for the yeah. next 10 years can you imagine doing that no. right uh, right so so that's interesting so then in that case do you feel like it's best to totally tailor the diet to the person's lifestyle? It has to be completely tailored. It has to, yeah. your, your case is completely different than my case. Yeah. And it's doing such a disservice to try and put somebody in a square peg. That's what the industry is very good at. Right. And the, the success of the industry is dependent on people's repeated failure. If you think about it oh, carefully, why would you ever spend any money or any time or any energy uh, going through some new nutritional program if you had gained success five years ago from something else. Right. Why would, would you ever do that? I would be like, I'm amazing. Right. We're done. It's <laughs> kind of like the medical industry where there's no, there's no real money in the cure of the disease. The money is in right. the treatment of the disease. That's so depressing. And it's <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Uh, ah. Uh, I know, but it's it's cool because I think it's I'm saying something a little bit different than yeah. what most people. Well, are. exactly, and I think that's what's special about you is that you yeah. are helping people cure, yeah, and not have to go back anymore. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So then, this is interesting. Um, I'm kind of wondering more a little bit about you. So, like, did you kind of fall in love with the health aspect first before you left your job, or, or was yeah. it the helping people that really moved you? It was helping people, and I had no idea what that would look like when I was a kid. But I have struggled with weight my entire life. I have gone up and down my whole life. And when I was an accountant, it was really bad because I'd be working 80 hours a week. Yeah. And every after every tax season, I'd be paying, you know, playing catch up. And right. I'd have like 30 pounds to lose. And it was yeah. just the worst. You know, you yeah. could feel your health uh, going downhill every year. So right. I thought, you know, um, and I saw the people in my industry just they were in poor health and I thought this is this is probably what I should do because right. I think there's a big difference between having sympathy for somebody and having true empathy meaning that you've been there right so um, yeah and so I, I have been there for years and years and uh, I wanted to kind of, kind of help people uh, kind of adopt the same habits that I've learned yeah. in the last few years. I'm so glad you did that. I love it. Yeah. yeah, It was really scary. Was it? But I think it's so cool that, that you and I met because that's what you do for a living right. and you help people break that cycle, but that's tough to do. That is tough to yeah. do. And the further yeah. you get into it, the older you get, the more yeah. obligations you have, and it's Stop really it. tough. But everybody that I have talked to that has done that, where they've changed, changed directions and right. they've followed their passion, they never look back. Yeah. It's awesome to see that. It is so great to see that because it, it almost does tie into their health mm -hmm. a lot. Because oh, they're so connected. Exactly. Your mental and your spiritual health, I mean, it really, uh, it's, it's so tied to the body. I love that. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. So interesting. So does that ever come up for you? Like when you're coaching someone with their health, mm -hmm. does it ever come up where you discuss their career or maybe their sort of their lifestyle, like the nine to five? Does that come up as well? Yeah, I don't really talk about uh, like their their job or their family issues, but it's more about uh, teaching people, not only giving them a little bit of self-discipline, but also self-love. Mm -hmm. And that's, it sounds, that's maybe sweet. it sounds a little hokey, but it is the truth. <laughs> so it's cute. okay. Because it, it really is it, what people, people will fall off. They'll, um, they'll blow it because they're stressed out. Yeah. They turn to food as a right. you know, way to fill the emptiness inside or right. whatever. And then when they do blow it, they're like, oh, forget it. I've just, I've totally blown it. And they just let themselves go. Yeah. But if you're there holding somebody's hand and say, look, right. it's okay. Right. You know, you're going to blow it. It's inevitable. Yeah. So, and then just keep them moving forward. That so. is so cool. Yeah. Then you just give them that permission to be human. To be human. Right? And then you're actually, what you're doing is you're actually replacing food mm. with love. And I tell people that food is the only addiction that you wear. You can be addicted to alcohol, yeah. prescription painkillers, gambling, right. credit cards, work, 
Right. But if you're or if you're addicted to food, everybody sees it and everybody judges you. Right. And and so this stigma that you develop with people looking at you, uh, it creates it makes it even worse. It feeds on itself. That is so insightful. Yeah. Like I feel like I need to quote you. Like, I need to write my book over again and have this man's quote. That was great. Seriously. You put me in your second edition. I will. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Coolest quote book. And ever. then I'll sign it on the back. Yes. I, honestly, that was really great. I mean, yeah. it's such a good point because it's true. You mm -hmm. know, there's plenty of people running around addicted to work like you said alcohol gambling whatever mm -hmm. and we would never know and you'd never know yeah. right this they're totally like, functioning at work exactly. nobody would ever know but then yeah you see that the weight and it is an epidemic in this country yeah. yeah we are overfed and undernourished in this country it's really bad well I'm so glad that you left your CPA job mm. so that you can go nourish the masses yeah they need so that. I can give you tax advice and nutrition advice in this <laughs> the best. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. that's why I love Richard Simmons because the guy was there. He really struggled when he was a kid and he was discriminated against and he had his own struggles, but he he caters to those people that really need it the most where right. where people have kind of forgotten, forgotten these overweight people. Right. And they don't know where to go to. I love that. And so, and I love that you model that so much. It's obvious in the way you talk that you're really passionate about helping people and obviously in such a nurturing, loving manner, which I think is what people need when it comes to food. Absolutely. It's what such they an need. emotional filler. I mean, that's Everything. probably why I got my latte today. I was a little stressed out. <laughs> you got me a latte. Thank you so much yes, for that. Yes, you're that's welcome. Me up. That was just a gift. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of wondering, what is the main thing that you want our viewers to leave with after hearing you talk about? Health? Yeah, I think in this modern society, we are are, we are conditioned for the quick fix solution. And um, if no matter how effective a diet or nutrition program may be, if you cannot imagine sticking to that for the next 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. then it's not properly integrated with your life. Okay. Yeah. And if you can just learn to make such tiny adjustments to your daily habits, then you can stick to it in the long term and, and right. it adds up to real long term consistent success. Okay, I love that. It's hard to do, but once you achieve it, it's it's yeah. uh it's, it's life changing. That's amazing advice. Mm -hmm. So so let's say for the people who are watching right now, they do want to do that. They want mm -hmm. to take your advice, right. but they might want a little support. Where can they find you? They can find me at balancedlifefitness.com. Okay, awesome. And I have a free consultation. It takes about thirty minutes. Okay. And um, I need to learn a little bit more about them, and then based on the information that they give me, then I can then make some recommendations on some steps to move forward from there. Perfect. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much Thank for being you. with us. It's I great. really appreciate it. Great experience. Who knew that health would be so deep and spiritual and insightful? It really it? is. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's so closely tied. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I love thank it. you. Thank you, Shereen. I hope you guys enjoyed him. I've enjoyed him. Um, and I definitely want to remind you always to call into the network. This is a non-profit network, so we always uh, invite support. And if you do give a donation, you get a copy of the coolest quote book ever. Who doesn't want that, right? Um, and also, if you're someone out there who's kind of been struggling with not loving your cubicle job or potentially being a CPA who's cooped up and wants to go be a health coach or any version of that story, uh, I am doing a, a live online free event called the Cubicle Monkey Revolution. So definitely go check out that link and join for free if that's something you're interested in. So thank you for being with us. And next week we will be talking about the mind and I will see you there. Thank you. Okay.